Welcome back to the Packet Lab. Today we're taking a look at another cool Cisco IOS command. And today's command is a little bit different because it's an undocumented command, and that command is test crash. So test crash is an undocumented Cisco IOS command that will simulate a router crash. And an undocumented IOS command is exactly that. It's one that doesn't appear in the Cisco documentation nor in the IOS inline help. And this is just a screen capture from the Cisco IOS documentation. And you can see test Apple talk, test call, blah, blah, blah no test crash and this is from the command line interface and normally if you type test and then invoke the iOS help with the question mark you should see the option down here for crash and actually I have a Cisco 1841 here if I type test you can see there's a bunch of stuff but crash is not one of those if I type test CR and then hit the question mark it should show me all the commands that start with test CR and crypto is the only one but if I type test crash, here's where it gets interesting, and I hit the uh, question mark, you can see that it says, oh, I'll take this with the carriage return. If I were to type uh, crasp, you know, mistype it, it will give me unrecognized command. You can see you can get to it. You just have to know that it exists, basically. And we'll take a look at it in just a bit here. So once you execute this command, and this is a privilege exec command, you won't be able to get to it unless you have privilege level 15. So when you issue the test crash command, it's actually going to drop you into a menu. So we did see this here on the CLI. So you got a menu here and you have a number of options and you can choose what type of crash you want to simulate, whether it's a, an error in memory, a software force crash, divide by zero, that's a bad one. Uh, and you can also set some of the parameters here, such as with the crash info file. And like I just said, you need to be in privilege exec mode. Which, and since test crash is not a documented command, I can't tell you which platforms or iOS versions will support the command. I know that it works on a Cisco 1841. I haven't tried it on the 2600s here. I have seen references to this command on the web going back to like 2005, so it probably is supported by older iOS versions. But again, I can't say with any level of certainty which platforms or iOS versions support the commands. Needless to say, issuing this command is a potential career-limiting decision. You don't want to issue this command on a production device because you're going to take it down. And if your network admin has ACS set up some other similar system to keep track of all the commands that are issued on the router, he's going to be really interested when he sees your name associated with the test crash command on the production router that mysteriously went down. So don't mess with this on production equipment. Save this one for the lab. Don't use this with Dynamips because reloads on Dynamips are ugly. They generally just throw errors. That's why today we're going to be using actual hardware. All right, and as we saw, you're going to get to pick what the reason for the crash is. Go ahead and enter that, and then the router will go through a simulated crash. And by simulated, it will take down your router. Just keep that in mind at all times that this is not something that's going to leave your router up in an operable state. It will take down your router. That's the last time I'm going to mention that, maybe. Anywho, when the router does come back up, you should be able to issue the show version command. And uh, with the show version command, it'll tell you what the uptime of the router is in minute. And it'll also tell you what the reason for the last reload was. Whether that was a requested reload, uh, a, a power reload, or in this case, it's going to be an error. And we can see here in this example that it shows system returned to ROM by error, blah, blah, blah. Just note this time here because the other piece of this is that iOS is going to create a crash info file. So if iOS crashes, if it's not a reload, if it's something that, you know, it just loses its damn mind and it crashes, it tries to create this crash info file and it'll dump a bunch of information in this. And this is really good for when you open uh, cases with Cisco, with their Cisco TAC to have this information because they can review this and say, oh yeah, this is consistent with, you know, this memory issue that we're having. Upgrade your code from version X to version Y. So it's good to know that this exists. So that's going to usually be in your flash. So if you do a show flash, you'll see this thing. It says crash info. And then this, this series of numbers here, you, you know, it's the year, month, day, hour, minute, second. And that corresponds with this up here. That's why I said note this time. So there's really two pieces. It's going to be evident in the show version and also in the crash info file that will be created. So let's take a look at this in action. And I have a Cisco 1841 here. I'm going to do a show version. I'm going to include system and uptime. 
because I don't want to see the whole show version. I just want to see this little bit here. So we can see here, it's been up for about 19 and a half hours. And last time it came up, it was due to being powered on. And we're running relatively new code, 12.4.25c. I do have warm reload enabled on this device. So if I do show warm reload, there's another video that goes through this in detail. But what this does is it enables the router to boot back up quicker. It's going to skip some of the boot process. So I've got that so that I don't have to wait so long every time that this reloads. And also, it keeps track of reboots due to crashes. All right, so let's go ahead and just do a normal reload. And I will pause here while this goes and comes back up. Okay, and we're back up. Let's take a look at our show version. So you can see here, we've been up for zero minutes, obviously. But the system was returned to ROM by reload. So this was a reload. In this case, it was a cold reload. I didn't specify a warm reload. And you can see here, when it comes up, it will actually tell you it went through a cold start and it took 72 seconds. Anywho, so now let's go ahead and instead of reloading that way, let's simulate a crash. So as I showed you, if you type in test and look for this command, it's not going to show up. You had a ton of test options, but none of them are crashed. And again, even if you type in CRA, it's going to say, oh, I don't know anything that starts with CRA, but type in test crash hit enter and we are dropped into the menu system. So what you got is a number of options for your crashes. All these that say crash router obviously will crash your router. These are the methods of death for the router that you're going to simulate. So it could be a parity error in main memory, IO memory. The one I like is uh, software force crash. That's what I'm going to do. So if you just go ahead and hit six to enter it, it's going to say, ah, uh, not so fast there, bucko. I need you to type in a capital C and I believe it has to be a capital C if you just type yeah, because C is different. This is close the uh, crash info file. So it has to be a capital C, and then it knows that you're serious about crashing this guy. So now you can see the prompt has changed a bit. It says type the number for the selected crash. So what we type now will actually start the process. And let's go ahead and crash it. Let's take number six, software force crash. Hit enter. And it'll tell you I'm causing a software force crash, and it'll start going through its dump. It's writing this information to the crash file. I'm going to pause here and let it do its thing. Okay, so we're back up again. Let's go ahead and take a look at our version. And we can see here we've been up for about five minutes. I did step away for a bit longer this time. And we see the system return by an error, a software force crash, which is exactly what we had invoked. So let's go ahead and do a show flash, not glash. And we see right here is what we're looking for, this crash info file. And you can see here it's going to use a date timestamp. So this basically translates to August 10, 2010 at 8.22.58, which is exactly what we have up here. A uh, quick tip if you want to actually read these or save them out, then what you would do is you would type the more command and then flash and then the name of the file. Let's cut and paste is my friend. Hit enter and you can see what's in there. This is what Cisco TAC is going to take a look at when your router crashes. It's pretty cool to take a look through this. It is long as hell. So when you do this, I'll give you one other tip. Terminal length zero. If you set the terminal length to zero, and then just go ahead and reissue that command. The more basically lets you read text files that are stored here. And then that file. And now, because I have the terminal length set to zero, I won't have to keep... Uh, hitting the space bar it's just going to spit out all that information without pausing so here we go and as you can see it's quite a bit of stuff and I will stop here okay and that took a lot longer than I thought it would it won't even scroll all the way back my scroll is completely full it took a good five minutes for it to finish that. So maybe keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and set the terminal length back to 24. Let's take a look at one other thing. If you do a show warm reboot. If you have warm reboot enabled, it will keep track of reloads due to crashes, which it's not doing here for some reason. I wonder, I ran into this before. No, here it goes. I don't know what the deal is. It's, it's a little janky the way this thing runs because sometimes it will recognize this as a crash and sometimes it won't. There's been a couple times I thought I was losing my damn mind because I would force a crash, it would come up and it would show it be a crash. And then later when I did a show version, it would just say return to ROM by reload. Like, wait, no, hey. So you might get some goofy results from this.
One thing you might want to do here if you go do test crash to jump back into that menu system is you have some options at the end here for the crash info collection and you can have it uh, display it, you can change the file name which is what we're going to do here. So if you type N for change the file name for crash info, you can specify your own file name. What you probably want to do is just say test crash info, or something like that that differentiates it from true crash info file because if you had some legitimate crashes on this router and then you're dicking around with this and you create a bunch of crash info files, the next engineer that rolls through and takes a look at that is going to be like, oh my god, this thing crashed 15 times in the last two weeks. Well. 14 of those times might have been you playing with this command so it's a good idea to change the name of the command or better yet when you're doing this just go ahead and delete the crash info when you're done which we'll show you how to do that in just a second here so you can change the name here let's go ahead and put a capital C to choose crash let's pick our poison this time let's try oh divide by zero which is eight and it's gonna do its thing I'm going to pause okay we're back again let's go ahead and do a show version and you can see here, didn't give us a lot of information here. It says an FPU exception doesn't tell us divide by zero. And now let's go ahead and do a show flash. And here's the crash info file from earlier. Here is the crash info file that we created this time. And you can see it says test crash info rather than crash info. So if an engineer came along and saw this, you didn't clean this up and he saw this, he would probably think this was a legitimate crash, which it's not. This is something that we created. But he would take a look at this and be like, okay, this is goofy. Somebody must have been playing around here because normally it doesn't label itself as test crash info. So that's kind of a good feature to turn on. If you want to get rid of these, because really these are not legitimate crash info files and you don't want them sticking around in your flash, you can just type delete and then flash and then the name of the file. I'll ask you if you really want to do that. I'm going to do both of them here. And sometimes it depends on the system. You could just type delete and then the file name because iOS is going to be like, oh, you mean flash or it's going to default to flash and it'll work. So now if we do a show flash, both of those guys are gone. All right, so that's a test crash command. Don't know of a real good real world use for this. The fact that it exists probably means that Cisco TAC might use it because you can put in specific memory locations for a couple of the commands. So it might be the TAC might want to work with you and test it and say, hey, let's go ahead and take this box and throw in this memory location and simulate the crash or blah, blah, blah. I'm speculating here. I really don't know what it would be used for. So in summary, it's an undocumented Cisco iOS command that will simulate a router crash. If your device supports a command, and like I said, I don't know which platforms and iOS versions support it. If you issue it, it'll drop you into a menu system and you can choose from a number of simulated crash scenarios. And one last time, you really don't want to do this on a production box unless you are leaving the company under really bad terms and want to piss them off on the way out. And trust me, there's much more devastating things that you can do than the test crash command if that's the predicament that you're in. Anyways, once the uh, router finishes reloading from the simulator crash, as we saw, iOS will create a crash info file and you can reference that. And it should also show up in the show version output as well. Well, that's going to do it for the test crash command. Thanks for joining me in the packet lab. And as always, I hope this helps you on your route to becoming a network god.